Hello and welcome to the third and last video in a series of the residual analysis of multiple regression. In this last video we'll be checking the regression assumption of normality. Again using the same pulse rate data as in the previous two videos we had checked the regression assumptions of independence by plotting residuals versus each of the x variables in the model and also since there was a time aspect residuals versus time. If there was no time aspect to your data, you would not be plotting this graph. And then also we were checking the regression assumption of constant variance by plotting residuals versus fitted values. We saw that it looks like that is fine. The assumption of constant variance seems valid. The assumption of independence seems okay too, except for maybe a slight uh, violation over time. Okay, so the last video, let's make a dot plot of the standardized residuals and see if they form a relative mound shape which would mean which would indicate to us that the uh, residuals are coming from a normal distribution and therefore so are the population errors of which we're trying to make a statement about. Um, okay so I'm gonna move some of these graphs over so I have a little more space Now the regression assumption of independence is not as uh, critical for that to be true as for those other assumptions and that's because we have central limit effects working for us. So if we violate normality, um, again a central limit effect would make our uh, you know, inference doing confidence intervals, prediction intervals, t-tests, f-tests still uh, accurate uh, enough as long as we have a large enough sample size. Um, however, if we had violations in independence and constant variance, then that would affect adversely our inference, our t-tests, f-tests, prediction intervals, confidence intervals. Okay, so I had stored standardized residuals in the first video and I want to make a dot plot out of that. Since I only have 30 observations, I think that's too few to make a histogram, but that would be another option. Make a histogram of your standardized residuals or residuals. Um, if I had more data, I would probably do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, make another column here, rounded and sorted standardized residuals move that down so it's the same just to make it kind of look similar to my other output here okay so here's what I do I say equal round parentheses grab the standardized residual comma one this will round it to one decimal place okay I'll format it to one decimal place in addition Okay, now why am I rounding it to one decimal place? Because all these standardized residuals almost certainly are going to be unique. So then if I made a dot plot of them, I wouldn't get any piling up of the points, no repeated observations. So I'm rounding, I'm losing a little bit of information, but that's fine because in my dot plot, I want to see the clustering of the points, the piling up of the points. I'm going to copy this formula down. Okay, so I rounded the residual, the standardized residuals. However, I also want to sort them in order to make my dot plot. So I'm going to cop, copy first, control C, copy, then right click anywhere on that selected area, paste special values, press OK. And now I want to sort also at the same time. Go data, uh, sort, and there it is, sorted from smallest to largest. Now note that these standardized residuals are not in time order anymore so they don't match the observation number over here anymore. Um, I could have took the observation number along with me here but uh, that's okay when I sorted. Okay I'm gonna make a column of frequency values. Remember when if you're making a dot plot we start at one. Let's center that. No decimal places and then I'll copy it down one but I'm gonna overwrite this this one right there. I just wanted the same formatting. Okay, so now you start with one and then you say equal if 
this standardized residual is equal to the one above it, comma, then take that initial one and add one to it, otherwise, comma, start over at one. There we go. And now I can copy, and you can see it is uh, counting correctly the dot count for any time I have a repeated observation, the frequency increases. Okay, I'm ready to make my dot plot. I'm going to trick Excel by making a scatter plot out of these two columns and then format it into a dot plot. Select both columns, insert scatter plot. There we go. And I think I'll just take this and paste it out of the way down here. Okay, let's clean this up. We don't need the legend. Click on it once, delete. The grid lines, click on it once, delete. We don't need the y-axis, which is nothing more than a frequency axis now. Click on it once, delete. Let's squeeze the plot from the bottom. Now it looks like my residuals go from negative 2 to plus 2, so why don't I clear out this empty space. Right click, format axis, negative 2 to plus 2 by increments of 1. Under number, let's get rid of that extra decimal place. There we go. And let's make these uh, diamonds, blue diamonds, black circles. Right click, format data series, marker options built in, circle, marker fill, solid, black, Line, uh, marker line color, solid black. Okay. And let's add an axis label. Or you could have, you know, outside of the chart, you could say this is a dot plot of standardized residuals. Okay. I think I'll get rid of the outside boundary. Right click, format chart area, border color, no line. And I'll squeeze that a little bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And again, I could copy this this whole area here and paste it as a Windows meta file, which would be resizable in like a Word document, for example. Okay, so based on this dot plot, I do see that there tends to be some more clustering in the middle than on the edges, which is good. I don't, I would prefer not to see this skewed. I don't want to see outliers. There is one outlier, but it's just barely an outlier. So nothing too bad going on here. And uh, I would say, based on only 30 points, that the regression assumption of normality is fine. I would only be concerned if there was some heavy skewness going on here. That's it for this video, and that concludes our series on the residual analysis of multiple regression.